Today we're going to go over the basic maintenance and proper use of both the compressor and the nail gun. Basically when you are starting up the compressor you want to make sure that the oil in there is sufficient and that the air valve is closed on the tank. Once you start it up you want to set the pressure on the compressor to the particular type of nail you're using. Trim nailers are going to take less pressure than your three and a half inch framing nails. So again, with any power tool, you always want to read and understand the directions for both the compressor and the nail gun. When we're going to hook up the nail gun, there's several ways to do it. If you don't have very good hand strength, Pulling this collar back on the actual air hose and placing it onto the nail gun, you don't want it to be pointing at you just in case it misfires. So you want to point the gun away from you and make sure it's not pointed at anybody else. Place the air nozzle, excuse me, Linda, so they can see this on the camera. Push down and then release the collar. That gives you a secure connection to the nail gun. It is now ready to fire since the compressor is already pressurized and there's air in the tank. In fact, right now we have 100 pounds of pressure in the tank. And when this gun is picked up, as soon as that trigger is depressed and the nail gun is placed on the table and depresses the front plunger on there, it will fire. Having your PPEs both when you're hooking up the compressor, hooking up the nail gun, and using both the nail gun and the compressor, you want to make sure you have the proper PPEs. Have your safety glasses. If you don't have safety glasses, if you wear regular glasses like I do, you want to make sure you have a good set of side shields, and you always wear your hard hat. Some people uh, like to have steel-toed boots, get into that kind of PPE, that type of situation is, in my opinion, a personal preference unless you're doing something that uh, could possibly injure your toes. Just good, solid, hard sole boots are sufficient. The biggest thing is with these nail guns when you start to use them is the fact that there is a recoil. Now, I'm going to hold this at an angle with my one hand and shoot with the other. As I pull the trigger and I depress this, now you can see the nail penetrated through the board and came out the other side. With the sequential trigger, in order for the gun to actually fire, you have to depress the plunger first, then pull the trigger, and the gun will shoot the nail. It will not continue to shoot nails until you again depress the plunger and pull the trigger. With the bump fire or rapid fire gun, once that trigger is pulled, I can continually depress the plunger and it will continue to shoot nails as I have the trigger on. My uh, hands are not as strong as a lot of my co-workers may, you know, so I just go ahead and I put it between my feet like this. Then I push it down and it up, and so that I can do it first time every time. I'm always going to um, attach the air and unattach it safely. It's really important to look at the nails that you're going to use. And uh, we can look at these nails here. They're, the nails here are slanted, and you have to look and see if your nails are slanted or if they're in a straight line, because if they're in a straight line, then your gun's going to be that's going to be obvious from the gun if they're slanted and they go into the gun like this. You can't put the wrong nails in the, you know, the wrong gun because otherwise they're going to get jammed up. It's going to waste time, you know, unjamming it. Um, so always make sure you're using the right nails and make sure that the air is not attached when you're loading new nails into the gun. If the gun ever gets jammed up, there's a misfire, um, then you take the air away, you 
uh, unattach it, and you try to find out what the uh, caused the jam, unjam it, and then hook the air back up again.